Hello and happy new year to you and your family at home. I hope your new year is full of prosperity and your investments do marvelously well in the new year. Welcome to the second half of our two-part year-end special on Investor's Guide. Last week we looked at our portfolios. This week we're going to pick the top mutual funds to invest in in the new year. So these are the top funds for 2014. You can write to us. Our email ID is at the bottom of your screen right now. I'm going to give you a quick minute to grab that pen and paper so you can write down the funds we talk about on this show while I introduce Dhirendra Kumar, our mutual fund expert who's been hand-holding us through the world of investments over the last five years. Dhirendra, thank you so much for joining us on this show and Happy New Year to you. And Happy New Year to you as well. Thank you. All right, so this is our list of top funds for 2014. Like we always do, we're going to start with multi-cap funds. I'm going to go in the order. Number one for this year is Quantum Long-Term Equity. ICIC Prudential Dynamic comes in at number two. And the Templeton India Equity Income comes in at number three. Dhrindra, there's a surprise there in Quantum Long-Term Equity. Is it the fact that it is a low-cost fund that's put it, put it right on top of our list this year? Yes, I am getting impressed by the day and also, you know, the well-articulated approach that is that has been followed so far uh, uh, is quite impressive. Uh, also, uh, you know, and what has slipped from our uh, earlier selection is something which is relatively poor performance or relatively below average uh, performance from uh, our earlier selection. Well, Dhrindra, I want to quickly ask you about the DSP BlackRock Equity Fund. It was number one last year. It has not even made the list this year. For those of the investors who are watching the show last year and invested in this fund, would you recommend that they hold on to it? No, it could, should be up for review because, you know, DSP BlackRock, uh, other funds as well, including this equity fund, has been very disappointing. They haven't got it right for last, you know, two years now. And... Uh, I would say that it is time to really review your positions in DSP equity funds. All right, this, these are our top multi-cap funds for the year. I'm going to go over that list one more time. Coming in at number one this year is a quantum long-term equity fund. ICSA Prudential Dynamic comes in at number two. And Templeton India Equity Income comes in at number three. Let's move on to large cap funds. Right on top and staying with its number one position is the Franklin India Blue Chip Fund, followed by Canara Rebecco, large cap, and the HDFC Sensex Plus. Dhrindra, HDFC Sensex Plus is a new name on this list. Why does it make your list this year? Impressive relative performance. That apart, you know, this fund can't go, uh, has to work in a very tight schedule, uh, in a very tight, uh, you know, framework, which is uh, it has to invest in, uh, a substantial part, 80% of the portfolio is anchored to Sensex stocks only and remaining 20% is the fund manager's discretion. And uh, so, so in that sense, you know, this fund and uh, so by its design, it will always remain a large cap fund. Uh, Blue Chip, Franklin Blue Chip has too long a history to really wonder that, you know, it will go, you know, haywire at any point. Uh, it has been very consistent. Uh, so I'm I'm purely guided by relatively superior performance and style purity. A fund which we, are, we have here is a large cap fund and should remain one. All right. So these are our large cap funds for 2014. If you're looking to invest in a large cap fund, this is the list you should be working with. The Franklin India Blue Chip Fund coming in at number one. Canberra Rebecca Large Cap at number two. And the HDFC Sensex Plus coming in at number three. Moving on to our mid and small cap funds, I'm going to give you the list first right on top, the BNP Paribas mid cap, HDFC mid cap opportunities and SBI emerging business. Tell us, uh, Dhrindra, how does this fund make number one on your list? What's special about this fund? An outstanding selection and last three years, you know, this, this fund manager has been uh, able to add significant value across time period. And uh, when I look at the portfolio, uh, I don't find questionable names, which means that he certainly has some instinct which is working to his advantage. Uh, uh, that apart, you know, I, I would still like to caution you something about the selection here, which is SBI Magnum Emerging Business. Uh, it has struggled in the last seven, eight months, but don't give up. You know, and uh, the, the, all the funds here are high-risk proposition. They can, uh, uh, and, they, and they can work very nicely if the market goes up, you know, go, start going up in a sustained way. Uh, but despite the struggle, I still, you know, I'm very convinced of what worked with this fund. And uh, it has not been as out, you know, uh, as impressive a fund as it was in the early stage of the last, uh, you know, early phase of last year. But I'm still not giving up. This is a high, you know, this is a fund which takes chances. 
uh, and assumes risk and gets compensated sometime and in recent time it hasn't and uh, despite that it's uh, part of the selection here I want to very quickly ask you before we wrap up this segment, a lot of the analysts who have been talking to this channel have been mentioning the fact that uh, mid caps are now in favor and that a lot of analysts now believe that it makes sense for investors to move their money into mid caps waiting for some sort of turnaround in the market. Is that something you advise to our viewers as well or does it make sense to stick to our allocation and not make any sudden changes? No, if you are following an allocation, you don't really need to heed to any of this advice. I would say that, you know, Keep it simple. Uh, if you are investing in one or two funds, then consider a large and mid-cap fund or a multi-cap fund, and that is it. Uh, if you are, if you don't want to do even that, then you know, uh, and you are concerned about the stability, then you should be in the balanced fund in the first place. You should not even worry about these levels of you know being in large cap, mid-cap. Anyway, you know, things turn around in all part of the market. You know, sometimes large caps do well, sometimes mid-caps struggle, and when mid caps and small caps start running then large caps struggle and to benefit from all this is the reason why you should have a fund which is investing across the market so uh, keep it simple and uh, and you know it is good to listen to all these suggestions but you don't necessarily have to follow it all right so these are the cardinal rules of investing here on investors guide keep it simple diversify your investments invest regularly and be patient. I'm going to give you a recap of our mid and small cap list for the year. And this is the same list that we had last year. So these funds are holding their ground. The BNP Paribas mid cap, HDFC mid cap opportunities and SBI emerging business. We're going to take a very quick break. When we come back, Virendra is going to stay with us. We'll talk about balanced funds, when you should be using them and the top funds for the year that you can rely on in 2014. Don't go anywhere. Back. You're watching Investor's Guide. This is our year-end special. So, Happy New Year to those of you who just tuned in. Direndra Kumar is with us in our Delhi studio. And what we're doing right now is picking funds that you can use over the next one year. So, these are the best funds to invest in in 2014. Now, we talked about equity funds. We talked about multi-cap, large-cap, small and mid-cap. It's now time to talk about balanced funds. Let's start with equity-oriented balanced funds. This is our list. Number one is the Canra Rebecca Balanced. ICSA Prudential Balance comes in at number two. The Edelweiss Absolute Return comes in at number three. The Rendra, the only surprise there that uh, is the Canra Rebecca Balance that's made it back to the top of the list. It's maintained its hold on the number one position. What makes this fund so special? Uh, it has been a balanced fund, and then it has been large cap focused, so it uh, it has the added uh, stability and. Uh, uh, it has been very consistent. We have balanced fund which do very well or uh, in one kind of market. Uh, you know, for example, the HDFC Prudence use always does very well in a rising market. There are funds which do very well in a falling market. Uh, but uh, this is a fund which has done okay in all kind of markets. So that's that's one a very fairly predictable strategy which is showing it, and it is it has been consistently, uh, you know, um, uh, very consistent with its allocation. So that is what I like about this balance fund. Well, Dhanedra, I must talk to you about HDFC balance and Reliance Regular Savings Balance. Neither of them made it to the list this year. They were number two and three last year. For anyone who's invested in these funds right now, would you recommend they hold on or should they move out and move into our new list? Uh, they can hold on. You know, the other funds are also just as good. But uh, here in the selection, what I have kept in mind, which is something additional, many a times we tell people that uh, you, you have never invested in a fund, then choose a balanced fund and and uh, you know if you're going to invest in only one fund this should be the one uh, so from that standpoint I have actually been little more conservative with my selection here and that is that has been the primary driver of uh, yeah, why we have these three funds these three balance fund uh, and on that front uh, Canada Rebecca of course is one the ICC uh, Prudential 
a balanced advantage fund which is guided by the price over book value and uh, ac accordingly changes its allocation in a very fairly narrow band. So it's a predictable strategy, a conservative strategy. Uh, likewise, you know, Edelweiss absolute, uh, you know, um, uh, return fund. I would not call it a balanced fund because it follows a strategy and based on its allocation, it looks like a balanced fund. But I would, I would say that here the selection is uh, entirely guided by their degree of conservatism and it, it should translate into meaningful return and th that, is, th that is the basis of this selection. All right, so I'm going to go over that list one more time. If you're looking for a balanced fund to invest in in the new year, this is your list that the Ranger brings to you. Number one for the year, Canada Tobacco Balanced. ICC Prudential Balanced Advantage comes in at number two. And the Edelweiss Absolute Return Fund comes in at number three. If you weren't able to write down all the funds we've mentioned on the show, feel free to send us an email to the email ID at the bottom of your screen and our team will send you a copy of any of these lists. Let's move on to the debt-oriented balanced funds. I'm going to go over the list that Dhirendra has picked out for this year. Right on top is the HTFC Multiple Yield Fund, followed by Reliance MIP and the Canva Rebecco MIP. Dhirendra, last week on our Christmas special, you talked about the fact that you're not very happy with how MIPs are designed and you're a little worried about the kind of charges that they have. In spite of that, you have two MIPs on this list right now. Tell us why and tell us why they make your list. No, among the MIPs, the, there is a regular, you know, the, 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 there is a problem that the, there is a disproportionate, uh, they are very expensive uh, for the for the kind of money they manage. And uh, but, and that is a big dampener to the, you know, the, uh, to the returns that these funds generate for investors. Uh, but that apart, if I have to choose uh, you know, relatively superior performing MIPs uh, or the debt-oriented hybrid fund, they, this will be, they, these are relatively superior performing ones. Let's talk about the HDFC multiple uh, yield fund, Dhirendra. Why does it make the top of your list? Oh, that is, this is a fund which has been able to, uh, it, it, it achieves the return with a far higher, you know, equity allocation than the usual MIP. Uh, that apart, uh, its uh, equity is, you know, it is so focused on uh, consistency of periodic income uh, from its underlying that, that has translated into a, a decent return or a fairly consistent return. Uh, but this is a fund which I which I was quite surprised that it is not you know understood or is is virtually unknown to investors generally despite its consistent performance. That's right. In fact, the returns of the HDFC multiple yield fund are on your screen right now. The three-year return of 7.8 percent and a five-year return annualized of 11% from a fund that invests largely in debt. Now these are our debt-oriented balanced funds. The HDFC Multiple Yield Fund is number one for the year. Reliance MIP comes in at number two and Canva Rebecca MIP comes in at number three. It's time to take another quick break. Remember, you can send an email to us if you want any of those lists we just talked about. But coming up on the other side, we'll give you three top picks of international funds for the year. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. You're watching Investor's Guide in ET now. This is our New Year special. So, Happy New Year to you if you just tuned in. Dhirendra is still with us and we're picking the best funds to invest in in 2014. We talked about balanced funds. We talked about equity funds. It's time for us to talk about international funds. This is Dhirendra's list of top international funds to invest in for the year. Right on top at number one is the Franklin U.S. Opportunities Fund. Motilal Oswal most shares NASDAQ 100 comes in at number two. And the Birla Sun Life International Equity Plan A comes in at number three. Let's talk about your number one fund, Dhirendra. It's a very interesting fund. It's a feeder fund. Tell us why it makes your list. Uh, one is that, you know, the case for U.S. fund is pretty strong that uh, the companies domiciled there are part of, you know, the, we have five, six such funds in India which investors can choose from. And broadly the story is that uh, U.S. companies, they're global companies and our currency will depreciate over a period of time because of the differential in interest rates. So on that front, these funds, you know, your money go, going and invest, you know, getting invested abroad will be a beneficiary of rupee depreciation over a period of time, not of the scale that we witnessed in 2013. 
that I think is a one time non replicable event, but over a long period of time also that will be an advantage. That about which of the fund, because when we look at uh, the options, one option is you know the NASDAQ 100 which is so technology heavy and I think that is a very promising area uh, if one should be participating. The other is this US opportunity, you know Franklin US opportunity fund which has a long history and it is selective. I think the active management has added significant value. Uh, in America, uh, you know beating the benchmark is not easy and this fund has been able to do it uh, well over a period of time, uh, over long time period. So that is one. Uh, the, the, the other options, you have conservative options, but you know when, a invest, when an Indian investor, he is investing abroad, for him it is added diversification and it should be a, a high performance one as well because you are, you, you know, I, I assume that, you know, he, here is an investor who is evolved and assuming risk. From that standpoint, this, look, this fund looks most promising among the actively managed ones. NASDAQ 100 is very promising for its huge technology uh, weightage. Uh, it is not a great diversification play because uh, NASDAQ 100 is technology tilted, but uh, one is able to get exposure to something which otherwise no Indian investors have uh, uh, gotten exposure to. I want to ask you a very quick question. If we put up on the screen a comparison of returns between the Franklin US opportunities and the NASDAQ 100, they are actually almost identical. In fact, over the last six months, the Moti Motilal Oswal NASDAQ 100 has beaten the Franklin US Opportunities Fund. But tell us again why it comes in at number two, why you believe US Opportunities is a better way to go than the NASDAQ 100. No, I do not think it is, uh, you know, the international fund, I, I, there, there is not an order. But I, I think that, you know, if one is looking for a US exposure, then Franklin US Opportunity Fund will be a better way because it is better diversified. NASDAQ 100 is not. NASDAQ 100 is substantially into technology, I think 30-35% is into technology stocks. Uh, that apart, uh, the relative superior, you know, the, the ability of this fund to beat its benchmark, its underlying benchmark, I am not referring to Indian, uh, 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 Indian benchmark uh, of, uh, in Indian currency de denominated. Uh, so, uh, on that front, its ability to beat the benchmark makes me think that, you know, it is very impressive, it has a long credible history. Uh, it is better diversified, and uh, uh, yes, so these are the these are the primary reason. Uh, Nasdaq 100 is a completely different kind of. I'm not saying this or that. It, it you know both can be had in certain proportion, or both have a different story. If somebody is convinced of technology and one has in India the kind of technology exposure we get is of a is almost like a technology utility companies. Here we are talking of technology companies which are real technology companies which are cutting edge and. Uh, the kind of scalability in appreciation which one can derive from such companies is unprecedented and no Indian investor has such exposure. From that standpoint, I think this could be a, a huge, uh, you know, boost to one's portfolio, uh, portfolio's return uh, with an exposure into NASDAQ 100. All right. So, I am going to give you that list again, the top three picks for the international funds of the year, the Franklin US Opportunities, Motilal Oswal, most shares NASDAQ 100 and the Birla Sun Life International Equity Plan A. That's on your screen right now. Finally, our last list of the show, short-term funds. These are debt funds open-ended. Dhrindra, tell us why you've picked short-term open-ended funds as opposed to maybe also looking at FMPs or liquid funds or income funds. Why are we focusing on this particular category? Focusing on this category primarily because this is the only relevant category where one can uh, you know, contribute by way of uh, choosing the uh, the worthwhile investment because liquid fund is an absolute commodity. FMPs you don't have a choice, but you know, uh, choose from the ones on offer when you have the money. Uh, so uh, it's not that you can choose an FMP and uh, you can keep investing in it regularly because FMPs by their design are closed end and they are open for a defined period and you have to invest in that period only. Uh, why these funds? If you have money for any period beyond three months to one year. These are worthwhile investment, and uh, there isn't a huge, uh, you know, variance in return in this, uh, in funds of this category. But uh, what I find, what the primary driver of this selection is consistently lower expense and consistently superior return uh, 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 derived from these portfolio. And these returns are not substantially higher from the from the average. But I I believe that in debt funds, if expenses are lower. That is a that, that is going to be a, a you know a competitive advantage for time. All right, so I'm going to give you Dhirendra Kumar's list for top debt funds to invest in for 2014. Number one, UTI short-term income, peerless short-term 
Sundaram Select Debt Short Term that comes in at number 3. Dharendra, tell us why the UTI short term income makes your list. Is it because the charges are low, the expenses are low and the uh, returns have been impressive? The returns are good and they virtually don't charge. Uh, and I don't know how long they can continue uh, with, with such lower expense. Uh, so uh, that has been, uh, uh, and it, it has been very consistent relative to other funds uh, with great stability. On your screen right now, I'm going to give you a quick recap of the three funds that Dharendra recommends as debt funds for the year. The UTI short term income, peerless short term and Sundaram select debt short term. That brings us to the end of the show. Email ID at the bottom of your screen. Dharendra, thank you so much for spending time with us over the last five years. And we hope that you will continue to stay with the show over the next 10 years to come and help us make smart investments in the future. Thank you. All right, that's a wrap on the show. If you have any questions for us, send it to us on our email ID. And of course, you can catch a copy of the show on our Facebook page and you can reach me on Twitter. Happy New Year to you. Stay with ET Now and Investor's Guide. Thanks for watching.